This week, billionaires take over the Middle East. An idiot takes out a crowd-seeking missile, and the British and the Germans are at it again. Racers, welcome back to another week of Race Recon with Kuro. We're going to be doing another low effort edit this week because uh, I had travel plans and I'm still figuring out what I'm doing with my life. And for this week's beautiful B-roll, we have the two Cadillacs taking on the GT class, the GT3 car and the TA car. So I hope you enjoy and sit back and get this information. Getting directly into game news, hot picks, hot picks, God damn it. Hot Fix 5.1 was released with fixes for multi-class free play crashes, permanently adding the Formula Mazda spec series to the multiplayer hopper, and finally updating the livery import system so that it maybe actually works. Uh, we'll get into it later on in this video to find out if that is actually the case. Turn 10 says that they listened to the feedback from the players and are excited to add the Formula Mazda spec series as a repeating series into the permanent rotator of hoppers along with the Forza GT and the Forza Touring Car series. So I'm looking forward to a bit more open wheel chaos. I know that the A-Class is a really good place for people to kind of cut their teeth and learn a little bit better car dynamics, maybe understand the basis of downforce and setup, but we'll see. It's just fun madness. It's Mario Kart. Go out there, have fun, stack a noob for me. In an upcoming community racing news, we have BPM continuing their Rivals Championship. On into round three, we are gonna be taking out the KTM Expo R onto the Suzuka East circuit. As with all the other rounds, it is a stock setup for the car with an open tune. So get out there, optimize your setup, and put down your best lap times. Participation can be found at the BPM forums linked below in the description. And the LMP2 Cup continues on for its fourth official round, going to Spa, taking on the Majestic Belgian Circuit, one of my personal favorites. I love the rolling countryside. And I already did a little bit of setup last night, and the downforce on those cars going through Eau Rouge, chef's kiss. Can't wait for the actual racing to get underway on Saturday. Participation in the LMP2 Cup is always open and can be found at their Discord server. Get in, get qualified, get driving. And if you popped in for the surprise live stream last night, you would have saw me working on qualifying for my E-Racing United license. All that was being done in preparation for the IFEA Trans Am Championship, whose free practice begins this weekend. So interested drivers should go on and get started now, as there are three main challenges you have to complete, as noted in last week's video. So get out there, get licensed, and come and participate with IFEA. And if you're aware of any other ongoing community activities inside of Forza Motorsport, feel free to either drop a comment or reach out to me on Discord or Twitter, and I'll be happy to include it in the community racing segment. And in Forza, this week's Car Pass car is the Ford Breathless Pro Racing TA Mustang. Just in time for the TA Mustang to bring home a 1-2 finish for the first round of the Trans Am Championship at Sebring. Helmed by Paul Menard of the Menards family, uh, his green and black Ford Mustang took home a, a commanding victory. Wally uh, Delabach in the ultimate headers for Mustang brought, brought in the second place. And rounding out the podium, we had Amy Ruman bringing home the McNicholas Company Chevy Corvette. While the two specific Mustangs that won the race this weekend are not coming to the game, you can make a pretty close approximation with, with the Breathless Mustang. And McNichols Corvette is in the game exactly as is, still in its iron red racing livery. Our other class winners are in TA2, we have the Silver Hair Racing Chevy Camaro helmed by Connor Zilch. In TA2 Rookie, we have Josh Hurley at the Green Light Simulation Ford Mustang. In TA2 Pro M, we have the SLR M1 Ra Race Cars Ford Mustang. Then moving down into SGT, we have Lee Saunders in the Land Search LLC Dodge Viper. In SGT Rookie, we have Joshua Carlson in the Inceva TC Fab Dyrex LTD Ford Mustang. I just want to give a congratulations to all the class leaders and the podium standers for this weekend's race. I can't wait to see them take the track next on March 21st at Road Atlanta. So be sure to follow the Speed Tour YouTube channel so you can catch all the racing live. And we leave the shores of the United States and all the way over to the Middle East. We have F1 at Bahrain and moving on. No, no, in, in all seriousness, I am excited to see the F1 season come back. It is looking like we're at least going to have a standard service of three races of Max Verstappen taking home a win, unless there are horrible reliability issues based on preseason testing. So I'm just going to sit here in my Mercedes coat and they're sandbagging. Uh, the car is going to be amazing. The W15 is going to be a rocket ship when everything happens.
it's a tractor again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, for the big show I'm really excited for, Weck is at LaSalle for the 1812 Qatar. The 1,812 kilometers of the race is a dedication to the country's independence, being founded on the 18th day of the 12th month of the year. And as you can see for this little bit of promo, we are currently lapping around Yas Marina, which is in neither Bahrain nor Qatar. But of course, LaSalle nor uh, Bahrain International Circuit are in the game currently, so we're just gonna make do. The 1812 Qatar is shaping up to be a really interesting race, launching the brand new generation of GT3 cars for the World Endurance Championship, as well as bringing us the most stacked field of LMDH and LMPH cars for a brand new season. Again, I would actually really love to understand what is the licensing process for the cars. If anyone from Turn 10 is out there and wants to talk about it, I'd love to like just bring greater transparency to the community so we understand what this process is like. And as I do throughout the race season, I'll be hosting live watch-alongs with timing for all the races that are going on this weekend. I will unfortunately probably miss the Qatar GP and the beginning of the Bahrain 1812, but we'll pick up and catch as much as we can. We'll probably do recaps throughout the rest of the day. So I'll be covering the races after the LMP2 Cup and leading up into the Enzam free practice. So come by, hang out, talk shit about your favorite driver. And on to this week's featured multiplayer, we are going back into the GTX sport car spec. The Grand Touring Experimental Class takes us back into the yesteryear of IMSA racing, where we have the silhouette body race cars taking onto the track, bringing us familiar shapes in the RX-7, the Mercury Cougar, Whistler Mustang, and many, many more. It's a fun class with some rowdy racing. Get out there, try to keep it clean, and have a good time. And continue the German Manufacturer Series, we are taking the next stop on the Ringer Tour and taking out the 2011 SLS AMG Mercedes. The 2011 SLS AMG revitalized the Gold Wing platform for Mercedes, and honestly, it's still one of the most hand-bitingly beautiful cars that I remember growing up looking at and like desperately wanting on a poster in my dorm room. It'll be a lot of fun seeing what the possibilities are for developing and tuning this car further into the game. And with respect to tuning, we move on to the Open Class series. This week's Open Class multiplayer takes us to the R Class and the C Class. Starting off with the C Class, again, it is the MX-5 Cup. The 1990 MX-5 has a commanding lead over the C Class with a grand total of 1,179 rivals points. Its nearest competitor, the Honda Civic from 1997, has only 371. The 1997 Honda Civic makes impressive showings at the Homestead Road Circuit and the Spa GP Circuit, showing that high-speed handling-focused circuits are the domain of the spicy K20A. But as always, the MX-5 shows that the more handling-focused, low-speed circuits are the domain of the track-carving beast. In terms of pure speed, we are now splitting the field a little bit between the Jaguar Mark II, which still holds down the fort at Le Mans, and the Alfa Romeo GTA 65, which shows up at Road America East. For our muscle car fans, the 1968 Ford Mustang and the 1969 Dodge Daytona also put strong performances down at high speed circuits. Now to pick up the pace, we step up to our class. We have a repeat of some of the major entries that we had in the S class here. The Porsche 911 doesn't quite hold on to quite as commanding lead as it did in the S class, but the McLaren F1 GT steps up to be and also ran in these in these competitions. When the downforce numbers need to be cranked up, the F1 GT puts on an impressive show, holding the second spot at Spa and the first spot at Suzuka Full, as well as Grand Oak. The top spot at Spa is currently held by the Gordon Murray T50, and the top speeds at Lamar are being held down by the Jaguar XJR15. And Jaguar makes another showing at the Brickyard with the XJR5. Other strong choices in the R class include the Chevy No. 10 DP, Celine S7, and the Celine S7 LM, as well as the Nissan No. 20 BB. As always, I want to thank you again for joining us for Race Recon this week. I hope to see you out there on the track, and I hope you're enjoying this background video that we have of these two Cadillacs taking on the track. I hope to put out a comparison video of a tale of two Cadillacs sometime in the coming week. I'm only saying this to actually hold myself to it. I want to produce something other than race recons. So look out for that. Uh, come by this weekend to catch all the racing. And until next time, remember, race safe, race smart. We're out.